It's true that electric cars are improving constantly in terms of mileage, performance and charging time. But there's still a lot of room for improvement. Hybrid cars are only going to increase, but fully electric vehicles aren't quite ready to replace internal combustion engines. The reason is the energy source that powers electric motors of EVs, the lithium-ion battery. Essentially in evolution and chemical batteries, lithium-ion batteries work well in EVs, but we need better solutions. We'll see what other battery technology alternatives we have now to the standard lithium-ion batteries and how far are they from commercialization to take head-on with the standard lithium cell. Hi, I'm Abhishek and you're watching Revolutionary Engineering. energy storage solutions not just to power EVs but to also satisfy energy needs for infrastructure, industrial operations and many more, especially when the world is shifting to low carbon technologies. But when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, storage solutions like the lithium-ion batteries provide a means to store electricity. We have alternatives to lithium-ion batteries for ground-based applications but in mobility we don't have many choices or in fact any choice. But there are some limitations that have prevented widespread adoption of EVs. We'll see why they haven't replaced IC engines, but to better understand why, it'll be good to first see how a lithium-ion battery actually works. A lithium-ion battery consists of one or more lithium-ion cells along with a protected circuit board. Lithium ions move between the electrodes of the cell internally through a conductive electrolyte. Meanwhile, electrons move between electrodes in the opposite direction through the external circuit. The movement of the lithium ions and the electrons provides current that charges the device. When the battery discharges energy to a device, lithium ions are released by the anode and received by the cathode. When the battery charges, the opposite occurs. The cathode releases lithium ions and the anode receives them. This is a brief explanation of its working. Now coming back to the point as to why lithium ion batteries aren't quite ready to replace IC engines. Actually, these batteries use a liquid electrolyte which has several disadvantages. Over time, these batteries lose their capacity and ability to deliver peak charge and they also bleed a lot of heat requiring significant cooling. Lithium-ion batteries can catch fire or even explode if damaged in an accident due to the flammable liquid they contain. If we see the construction of a conventional lithium-ion cell, it consists of three main layers, a positive electrode or cathode, a negative electrode or anode, a porous polymer separator that keeps the electrodes apart and two electrical contacts, one at each electrode. The material of the electrodes is such that its particles are capable of storing energy. The entire cell is filled with a liquid that serves as the electrolyte, which is the medium through which lithium ions travel. If we take a look at what happens inside the cathode electrode particles, each cathode particle is made up of a lithium containing metal oxide such as lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt oxide or in short NMC. These elements form a stable structure to hold the lithium ions where the battery is in a discharge state. As the battery charges, the lithium leaves the cathode particles, makes its way through the liquid electrolyte passing through the pores in the separator on its way to the anode. There the lithium enters the anode particles, commonly made of sheets of carbon sometimes adding silicon. The sheets of carbon host the lithium until the energy is needed with six carbon atoms holding a single lithium ion. Now there are some noticeable limitations. One is the high volume needed to accommodate a given amount of energy in the battery that lowers its energy density, leading to a limited range of an EV. Another one is the time it takes to fully charge a battery which is usually over an hour and the best of the options available in the market. These limitations need to be resolved to stand close to an internal combustion engine. Solid state batteries are claimed to have the potential to overcome such limitations. But what are they actually? Let's now see how, how a solid state lithium ion battery works. In a quantum scape solid state lithium metal battery, there are only two main layers, a cathode or positive electrode with an electrical contact and a solid state ceramic separator which replaces the porous polymer separator found in the conventional lithium ion batteries. Where there used to be an anode, there is now just an electrical contact. The cell is manufactured without an anode. As the battery charges, the lithium leaves the cathode, traveling through the atomic lattice of a non-porous solid-state ceramic separator. 
Once the lithium is through the separator, it deposits between the separator and the electrical contact, forming an anode of pure metallic lithium. A lithium metal anode allows the energy of the solid state battery to be stored in a smaller volume, enabling a high energy density as compared to conventional lithium ion batteries. Solid state lithium metal allows for greater range from higher energy density of 15 minutes fast charge and safer operation by eliminating the organic polymer separator. We know how safer operation and fast charging is crucial to the end users, but a higher energy density delivers real economic benefits. Energy density is the amount of energy that is contained in a battery in comparison to its weight, also called gravimetric energy density or specific energy of a battery. Or it can also be expressed as the amount of energy contained in a battery in comparison to its volume, also called volumetric energy density. If we compare two EVs with different energy density batteries, an EV equipped with a higher energy density battery shall mean that it will have a higher range from the same weight and space occupied compared to a normal battery. Also, it will mean a lighter and a more compact battery to get the same range. Leading lithium ion batteries boast an energy density of about 600 watt hour per liter, but QuantumScape expects its solid state battery to achieve an average energy density of 1000 watt hours per liter. That could extend the average EV range to between 375 and 400 miles, which is quite near to the range of internal combustion engine powered vehicles. Another reason for using a ceramic electrolyte is that the material is less susceptible to dendrite formation, an area of concern for lithium batteries in which lithium ions clump on the battery's anode over the course of many charge cycles to form highly reactive protrusions that can cause a short loss of power or even fire. Although QuantumScape solid state requires lithium in its construction, the company is confident that the dendrites won't be a threat. In general, battery makers claim that all solid state batteries offering solid electrolytes will be safer than traditional batteries, lowering the risk of a battery fire and eliminating the need for thermal management systems that is found in traditional lithium or uh, liquid electrolyte based batteries. According to the chief marketing officer of QuantumScape, Asim Hussain, the ASSBs have fast charged their cells going from 10 to 80 percent in 15 minutes 400 times consecutively and some have gone through a total discharge and charge cycles almost 1000 times. Now traditional lithium ion cells are not even close to these claims. Now the most awaited thing is how soon they are expected to hit the market. Now according to QuantumScape by 2024 you can buy an Audi or Volkswagen with its batteries a vehicle that can go nearly 400 miles on a single charge then recharge in 15 minutes. Early prototype battery cells could be delivered to Volkswagen as soon as this year. By the end of 2023, it plans to build a pre-production line and deliver ASSBs to Volkswagen for integration in a test car that is scheduled for 2024 or 25. But is the quantum scape only hope or are there few other alternatives that might replace the standard lithium ion batteries in the future? SES, a Singapore-based battery maker, says it will deliver an alternative lithium metal battery by 2025 that can compete with ASSBs. The battery named Apollo is claimed to be the largest lithium metal battery that has ever been built. Nissan says it will have its own version of solid state batteries in vehicles by 2028. It's focusing on a sulfide based solid electrolyte that incorporates a hopping mechanism which increases the speed and ease at which ions move between the cathode and anode during the battery's charge and discharge. According to the team, Nissan might use different ASSB chemistries for different cars. Another breakthrough has been made possible by a research team at Drexel University that opens up the doors for commercial use of lithium sulfur batteries, the batteries that have failed in the past due to the technological limitations. The recent discovery is a new way of producing and stabilizing a rare form of sulfur that functions in carbonate electrolyte used in commercial lithium ion batteries. Till now, introducing sulfur into a lithium battery was a challenge. Lithium that only has one electron likes to bond with different elements which leads to its bonding with electrolyte and then moving to the anode and ultimately coating it. Now this happens with each cycle until the battery dies. Due to the irreversible chemical reaction between intermediate sulfur products called polysulfides and the carbonate electrolyte, the use of sulfur cathode in a battery with a carbonate electrolyte solution resulted in a complete failure of the battery. The breakthrough was made possible when an attempt to deposit sulfur on carbon nanofiber cathode using vapor deposition technique resulted in crystallization of sulfur as a variant called monoclinic gamma phase sulfur. The chemical phase of sulfur which is non-reactive with the carbonate electrolyte. Now if this battery hits the market, it will offer two major benefits. 
First, replacing the cathode and lithium ion batteries with the sulfur would eliminate the need for sourcing cobalt, nickel and manganese. And second, such a battery would offer more than 4000 charging cycles that is equivalent to 10 years of usage. Now up to this point, we have seen the, the bright side of ASSBs, but does that mean they have no downsides or they are just perfect? Well, certainly not. Apart from the difficulty in scaling its production to meet the demand for powering millions of vehicles, there are some issues in the technology itself. Theoretical claims of this technology differs largely from what's practically achievable in real life conditions. According to Yang Shao Huan, PhD who leads a team of researchers working to improve the efficiency of ASSBs at MIT's Electrochemical Energy Lab, a cautious view of claims about cycle life and energy density is quite an important thing. Translating energy density demonstrated in a research lab to a larger cell for practical applications is a challenge as there are physical limitations to energy density. Unlike lithium-ion batteries, solid-state versions breathe during use, which can alter the pressure on the materials between the electrodes. Nissan points that its design will ensure uniform pressure stability, referring in part to mitigating stack pressure. Now, simply put, the stack pressure is the pressure between the solid electrolyte and other components of the battery. Consistent stack pressure between different parts of the battery helps ensure the battery doesn't decay at different rates in different places. Too much pressure on the cell will lead to charge and discharge issues. They do accept that controlling this pressure is difficult. QuantumScape is confident and aims to avoid the problem altogether by making an adjustment to the typical layered configuration of an ASSB. In essence, one of those layers will move. As we have already seen that QuantumScape's battery contains just one nickel, manganese, cobalt or lithium ion phosphate electrode, in such an anode-free configuration, all the lithium initially lies within the battery's cathode until upon the first charge, it migrates across the electrolyte to the electrolyte surface on the other end of the battery, electrochemically making an anode and ensuring equal distribution of the lithium ions. Another problem with ASSBs could be a serious safety issue while harnessing the battery's high energy density. At any one point, if these cells are penetrated or open, there's going to be a lot of volatile lithium, which is very flammable. If we now summarize and compare the available technologies in the battery space based on parameters such as energy density, charging cycles, safety, charging time and cost, we see that in a quantum scape battery, apart from a fairly high density of 1000 watt hour per litre, 1000 charging cycles and charging time of 15 minutes and going from 10 to 80% charge, the biggest advantage is quite a high level of safety due to a non-flammable separator. From a sulfur, sulfide based solid state battery, the energy density and charging cycles and charging time are similar to quantum scape battery, but the greatest advantage is the cost, which is going to be around 65 to 75 dollars per kilowatt hour, with the disadvantage of average safety offered due to highly reactive sulfides. Lithium sulfur batteries offer an extremely high energy density of 3000 watt hours per liter, which is straight three times that of a quantum scape battery. But what makes this battery truly unique is the unexpectedly high charging cycles of 4000 that translates to 10 years of battery life. But a very high cost of $200 per kilowatt hour makes this choice unattractive. Now coming to the most popular battery, which is Tesla 4680 battery cell, a 56% reduction in the cost per kilowatt hour offered by Tesla can keep this battery fairly ahead of other technologies that are yet to be commercialized. But a low energy density compared to the other alternative battery technologies can make it a less acceptable choice once the other technologies go mainstream. Only the time will tell how deeper the ASSBs will penetrate the EV market, but ASSB will certainly allow automakers to differentiate their EVs. Economics, charging time, battery life and safety are going to be the key drivers for any battery technology to be used in the electric vehicles. What do you think of the future of battery tech? Comment in the section and if you like this video, you may share it among your friends and subscribe our channel for updates on many more breakthroughs in the science and technology space. Thanks for watching.